a group of anti-COVID vax mandate protesters were assaulted while demonstrating. So why is the guy who was defending them the one who's currently fighting charges? Yeah. We got to talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show, and thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our Cardio Miracle Studios here in lovely... Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by Amp America. Very excited to be part of the Amp America team. And I would like you to head to ampamerica.com. Check out some of our awesome opinion articles, news articles, and more from some awesome folks in the Liberty Conservative Movement. So please, one more time, check out Amp America. Very proud to be part of the Amp America team. Also very excited to be powered yours truly and uh, personally by uh, Cardio Miracle. Cardio Miracle is our studio sponsor and I am a huge, huge fan. Why? Because I've been using Cardio Miracle for just about eight months now. And I gotta tell you folks, I have seen the Cardio Miracle difference for myself. Now I've tried supplements all over the place. I, I mean, I've tried uh, like, like, Supplements to help get, you know, the, the pump up at the gym, supplements to help you sleep better. Every I, I try it all and nothing ever really worked until Cardio Miracle. Cardio Miracle and its secret ingredient, nitric oxide, has helped me experience not just better pump at the gym, better uh, restful nights at uh, sleep at night, but also I found my, my blood pressure absolutely plummeting. That's a good thing for me, especially with a family history of high blood pressure. So folks, I want you to experience the cardio miracle difference for yourself. Head to briannicholshow.com forward slash heart. Or if you're watching the video version of the show, just go right down below here in the show notes, click the link. It'll bring you over to cardio miracle where you can go ahead, get your order today, but also save 15% off your order. Use code T B N S. And by the way, folks, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, there is a 100% money back guarantee. But I don't think you're going to have to use it because I guarantee, I guarantee personally that once you use the Cardio Miracle, uh, that use Cardio Miracle for yourself, you're going to see the difference firsthand. So please go ahead into the show notes, click the link, or if you're an audio listener, briannicholshow.com forward slash heart. It is 1000% the best heart health supplement in the world. One more time, Cardio Miracle. All right. Now, now. I guess not some fun stuff. I usually say we're going to have a fun-filled episode. Today's not really a fun-filled episode, more so a this is happening episode. And uh, let, let's just maybe bring our guests on to discuss this uh, today because Kevin is going to join us and talk to us about why he was helping defend some anti-COVID vax uh, protesters from being assaulted only to be the one who's now being having charges pressed against him. There's a lot here we have to unpack. So to discuss that, Kevin is joining us as well as his lawyer, Ilya. Gentlemen, thank you for joining the Brian Nichols Show. And I wish it was on a better topic to discuss, Kevin, but unfortunately, that's not where you found yourself back in 2022. So uh, thank you for joining the show. And uh, let's maybe start things off. Who are you and how the heck did you end up in the situation here, Kevin? Yeah, so um, I've been... Basically, it started when uh, work started mandating um, that people attest to their COVID vaccination status. Um, I knew something was shady was going on. I did a lot of research into how they faked COVID number deaths in in the in the media to make it seem like a bigger deal than it really was. Um, I came to the conclusion that COVID was created for the vaccine and not the other way around. And I decided to become an activist, um, doing a lot of protesting, doing a lot of civil disobedience, um, getting arrested in the name of uh, fighting against mandates. Um, never violent up until now. It was usually just peaceful protesting uh, up until that day. And, Up um, until that day, yeah. Well, yeah. and really quick, by the way, we 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 will have the video for folks who are curious in the show notes. We we were going to share it here, but for the sake of time, I know it's like an eight and a half or so minute long video in its entirety. So, folks, if you want to check out Kevin's video that he's referencing here of this interaction, link in the show notes. Kevin, didn't mean to interrupt. Please continue. Sorry. Oh no, that's fine. Um, the fight itself is like the t first two minutes of it. The rest is uh, additional information. Um. But yeah, the, the day of, 
um, it was July 8th, 2022, uh, a group of us got together and saw that the Acton, the, the Disco Children's Discovery Museum in Acton, Massachusetts, was holding a COVID vaccine clinic uh, for five to 11 year old children. Uh, us knowing the harms of the vaccine, uh, the instances of myocarditis, pericarditis, and other health um, ailments that occur to people that become vaccinated. We wanted to warn these kids and their parents to stay away from this vaccine. So we went straight to the, to the, um, to the clinic. Uh, uh, there was a, it was a public way. Uh, the museum is placed uh, adjacent to a um, piece of public land eased uh, to the public. So it's just like protesting on a public sidewalk. And um, we went there, protested. And during our protest, some dude comes out of the woods and starts violently attacking the whole group of us. Literally, by the way, folks, the guy just comes out of the woods, just like out of nowhere. Uh, the guy, by the way, Fred Smith, right? Is that who we're referencing here? That is, yes. Okay, good good old Fred Smith. Well, hmm. Kevin, at this point, Fred Smith's walking up to you you lovely group of, of protesters who, and yes, we, we hear on the show, we've talked about this many a time, like the, the COVID vax story, the whole COVID conversation. If you're interested, folks, and you haven't heard any of those episodes, I don't know where you've been the past three years, but go through the archives. We got oodles of stuff to go ahead and check out. But Kevin, let, let's let's go through, let, not talk about the, the COVID vax and the, the merits and stuff. That's a whole separate conversation for a different day. But in this case, right, you, you're you out there exercising your First Amendment rights. Mr. Smith doesn't come to Washington. He walks out of the forest somehow, and then he goes after you. And and then we start to see the, the physical uh, engagement start to take place. What what happens there? Well, I can, uh, I can hand that part off to Ilya. Yeah. There we go. Ilya, what, what happened here? Yeah, so the guy, based on the video, he just blindsides Kevin from the right, grabs his hand, and starts pulling on him. Um, meanwhile, he smacks a woman's phone out of her hand with his other hand. And then we see on from far away from a different camera... Um, He's dragging Kevin by his hand and by his large poster. Kevin had a big poster up. Uh, it was a sign that was mounted on one inch PVC pipe joined together with uh, T joints on the sides. So it was like a frame. So the guy's trying to wrestle the sign away from Kevin and he's dragging Kevin and he's calling at a second woman uh, trying to hit her. So at this stage, Kevin to defend himself and the woman whacks him over the head a couple of times with his megaphone. This does nothing absolutely to stop the guy or cause any injury. The guy continues his rampage. There was some pepper spraying each time. It was because Kevin pepper sprayed him each time. It was because the guy was going after a woman. He was trying to attack a woman protester who was there. The guy rips apart the sign, takes one of these uh, PVC one inch pipes, four foot long, uh, winds up like a baseball player and just whacks the hell out of Kevin. Uh, for and Kevin doesn't even spray him because again, Kevin only sprayed when the guy went after women. Now, once he started trying to whack a woman with that pole, Kevin sprayed him again. Finally, the guy left. Kevin came, Kevin stuck around, waited for the police. In fact, he told everybody, Call the police. He gave his side of the story. The guy was arrested later. Um, and Kevin ended up being charged. Okay. That right there leads to the biggest question mark I've ever had in my show. You have witnesses, you have video evidence. What? Why, why are we going after Kevin here? What is, what's the argument? What's the, what's the, 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 the claim, the case that's being brought 
right now against Kevin. I mean, if, if we have all this, this data, this evidence to refer back to, I'm a little puzzled. Help, help fill in the gaps here, gents. They're refusing to allow. So two things, uh, several witnesses who were heckling the protesters who we know have, uh, you know, uh, pro COVID attitude made false statements, notwithstanding the video made false statements about who attacked whom first. And the prosecutor is claiming that Kevin was the first aggressor, even though the video is obviously to the contrary, but we can't play the video until we have the trial. So basically we have to go through this whole process. Wait, wait, Uh, pause. What? They, They won't watch the video until the trial? Yes, the police detective who uh filed the complaint left that video the initial attack out of his complaint so it really looks like kevin was the aggressor i I, okay wow so let's just start there there's a lot to unpack how is that legal it's not (laughs) so how are they doing this i mean i guess what, what what are they even charging Kevin with, if, if we have video evidence that's that's going against everything from a charging standpoint that they could possibly bring forth here. Assault and battery with a dangerous weapon for the megaphone. Assault for, uh, there was one point where uh, it looks like Kevin is punching the guy, but he's actually just putting the the spray bottle in his hand, in his face, uh, the pepper spray, ironically didn't charge him for the pepper spray um, and charge him for trespassing where Kevin was, for trespassing. Yeah. Where it was public property right. or public okay. access property. And so, what about Fred? What, what did Fred get hit with? Kevin. Fred got several felonies. Good. Several assault and battery with dangerous weapons. Uh, assault and battery with dangerous weapon. One for me, one for another protester, and one for another protester. Uh, he also got what disorderly conduct and something else. That might have been all of them. I'm not sure. So but, okay. So but, so and then what happened? Yeah. Okay. Well, well uh, he got a sweetheart deal where uh, the prosecutor just lumped it all together. He dismissed some of them all outright and the rest lumped together and he got anger man, nine months of anger management and he's all set. Nothing on. So he he gets to go hang out with Jack Nicholson doing anger management. And then you're still facing all of these charges because, and and let's maybe dig into the political reasons. Cause now we can actually go back to this COVID thing. Talk to me about what the um, Massachusetts secretary of health, Mary Lou Sutters, um, what, what are her emails showing? So if anything, basically, after the protest happened, um, the vice president person that was running the Vax clinic uh, <laughs> alerted uh, these public officials. Uh, one was part of the um, Massachusetts State Police, um, and they contacted the governor's cabinet, including Mary Lou Sutter's. Um, saying like uh, they're all worried about what kind of news got out there about what happened that day. And they came out and in a FOIA that was uncovered by another of our fellow protesters. Um, it was uncovered that they were in those communications with the mass state police and the mass state police replied that uh, they were going to do something about it, uh, which through us, we had no idea the Mass State Police had any involvement in this investigation into this st- in case until we found out via FOIA, um, which should have been handed over in discovery by our prosecutor, because we only thought that the Acton Police Department had any involvement. Wow. So okay, apparently wait. more people than we thought this was a bigger deal than we thought it was. They're making an example out of you. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. And they they gave him a slap on the wrist and they're really going after me instead, despite what you see with your own eyes in the video. Did, did, 
they, so they hit you the trespassing. Uh, they trespassed you. So, but you weren't the only protester. <laughs> what, what, did anybody else get hit with with trespassing, or is just you? Yes. Well, yes. Um, and they kind of they did a really sneaky thing too. So, um, there were four of us that were hit with trespass charges because there was a group of us and um those those other four were um brought to a clerk magistrate's hearing uh Ilya represented them there and he showed them the deed that shows that that's private that that that's public property and got them dismissed that without even going to an arraignment um now, despite me being in the exact same area as the other protesters, because we were together, they still won't drop the trespass charge for me. I don't know why why that doesn't apply to me, too. This all smells so bad. <laughs> like, there, there is so much behind the scenes here that's taking place. I mean, it's it's quite obvious they're targeting you, Kevin. And, and one of the one of the protesters that had ended up fleeing uh, when Fred attacked, she fled and didn't end up talking to the police on site. So when uh, talk, when they, when the uh, witness advocate person called another one of our protest fellow protesters, uh, she, the advocate wanted to know who that other person that ran off was. And with her consent, she told him, told her her information. Then all of a sudden that person gets charged with trespass. So wow. under the guise of helping us out, she just bamboozled us into giving away one of our protesters information so that they could additionally charge her with trespassing. Holy cow. Okay. So this sounds bad, <laughs> right? Like everything we've heard today, it just, it sounds like it's a witch hunt. Right. And it's all targeted against you, Kevin. And I guess and this might be a question for you, Kevin, or for you, Ilya, but like what what are what are things looking like <laughs> from a legal standpoint as you're you're going closer now to a court date? Like, do do you see this being exposed for just like the corrupt BS that it it actually is? Or or do you feel that Massachusetts might be playing some some you know dirty, dirty little underhanded tricks behind the scenes that are gonna make this a lot more difficult than we expect? They're going to make this a lot of diff more difficult. I mean, our case is great. We have all the evidence. The problem is that the judge can really mess with it, and he has been messing with it so far. Uh, we've been denied discovery. Um, he denied us any investigation into this Massachusetts Secretary of Health thing. Uh, we weren't allowed to investigate her. Now, he did allow us to call her as a witness, so we'll be able to question her at trial, but we won't be prepared with documents uh, that we wanted from uh, the Secretary of Health. And then there's the jury. The Massachusetts local community is very much pro-COVID vaccines. 91% um, of that town's children, nine to, sorry, five to 11 have been vaccinated. So that's five to 11. Um, compared to the rest of the country, that's just massive. So uh, we're hoping that the court will allow us to keep the topic of his protest away from the jury. That way, whatever, they'll think it's some Black Lives Matter protest or something, you know, and maybe take pity on him. But if the court lets the jury see what they were protesting about, mm -hmm. we're going to have a biased jury. And that's mm -hmm. going to be a problem. And they won't. And we already motioned for this. And the judge hasn't ruled on it yet he's just he's putting it off until trial so we're up in the air until then until april until april so you have at least another two months here of just kind of sitting and waiting yeah yes. and we don't know which version of trial we need to prepare for which okay by the way folks this all took place 
not this year, not 2023. This happened back in 2022, right? That obviously this is talking about the COVID manda uh, mandates and vaccine mandates and stuff. So this is where this is all coming up from. So you've been going through this, Kevin, for, for two plus years or two, two years now almost. So like what, what has that been like for you personally? Like how has this impacted your life? How has this impacted your job? All that stuff. Well, it's a, it's a real pain. Mm. Um, having to drive an hour and 45 minutes to court every month or two, um, just for this. And, and this was supposed to be over, uh, back in January of this year, because the original deal was that, um, I would go up, plead the fifth, Fred, the attacker would go up, plead the fifth. There would be no other witnesses and it would all get dismissed. And the prosecution agreed to this. But then on the Friday before Tuesday's bench trial where this was going to happen, um, all of a sudden, a witness wanted to come out and testify against me. So they threw that deal in the garbage. Wow. Holy yeah. cow. Like, <laughs> and by the way, this this right here is a perfect example, especially to our friends on the right, of how how broken and and not just broken, but how weaponized our criminal justice system can be. We had uh, Daniel Beignet on the show back a few weeks ago, and he was telling the story of what he was experiencing in his local community in Vermont. And he was just trying to do a shooting range. Like th that's all he was trying to do. And they went after him. They, they targeted him. They, they made him, uh, they made him an example. And, and Kevin, that's candidly what it feels like they're doing to you here. They're, they're trying to make an example. You, you want to stand up and protest our state edicts, Mr. John Q citizen, good luck. We're going to make your life hell. And, and that right there is terrifying because you, you did the right thing. You stood up. And this is by the way, my final thoughts, I'll turn it over to you as we get towards the end of the show here, but like you did the right thing, Kevin, you, you stood up for, for per, you know, personal defense. You were defending someone. And in this case, you're defending women. Right. And Yes. That's a good thing like that. We objectively as a society, as a human race, I hope we can all look at that and say, you did the right thing. Fred did the wrong thing. So in a, a just a common sense approach to this, we look at this and we say, yeah, Fred's the bad guy. Kev, okay, maybe, maybe slap Kevin on the wrist for trespassing. I don't know. But like, not this, not what you're facing. And, and this is why there are so many folks who look at the system. Right. I'm just going to use the system in this case as a means to describe because they look at it and they see they see the corruption. They don't feel that they have a voice. And and this is something that, man, I, I'm trying to, like, unpack the best way to, to take care of this stuff, because we we talk about the importance of, of going local. Right. We talk about like, hey, complain about federal government. That's great. But like, let's make a difference where you can actually make a difference. State and local. This is your state government. This is your local government. And this is where it's like, well, then what? And I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Kevin, but like maybe maybe it's time to move. Like I moved out of Philadelphia, PA, um, and, and that was during COVID as well. And I hightailed it over to Eastern Indiana. Um, I, would, I would maybe just strongly recommend that maybe becomes a, a possible option on your roadmap of life here as you're kind of figuring things out. But uh, I say all that, folks, like this is, this is why this is such an issue because Kevin was just out doing his, his first amendment rights, peacefully protesting. And then what happened? His entire life got turned upside down because one idiot walks out of the woods and turns into a violent man, starts attacking people. And then Kevin standing up and, and, and defending himself and defending the people with him ends up getting the, the charges here. Just it, it, it's mind blowing. And it only stops when we as a people, start to see this in mass and say, this is bad. We need it to stop and actually start holding people to account. So I say all that. That's my final thoughts for today. Kevin, what are your final thoughts, my man? What, what do you want folks to take away from today's episode? And, and obviously we want folks to be able to support you. So we'll, we'll plug that at the end, but just a nice little bow to wrap this episode today. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I feel like um, what you're saying is right about people, the awareness factor. Um, I feel like that's the only way to keep these corrupt officials in check is to make sure they know we're watching them because uh, it's scary being in that courtroom alone. Uh, thankfully, we have more supporters now. We have 
even somebody with a camera in there now. And I really feel like the purpose of that is to keep them aware that we're watching them because they do the shadiest stuff when you're not watching and when they feel like nobody cares. So that's why we're trying to bring attention to this so that it keeps me safe and it keeps others safe from this happening again, because it will happen again to somebody else uh, in another yep. version. But um, yeah, we got to, they're, they're accountable to us and they need to be reminded of that at all times. And we shame the shit out of them if they forget. Amen. Ilya, I know uh, we, we had Kevin Hahn here for, for his show. You're, you're the legalese, but do you have any final thoughts as we wrap things up today? Um, <clears throat> just that this is part of the same kind of lawfare that's being fought across the country. There are much bigger fish that they're catching, such as Donald Trump, but it's the same exact strategy of going after uh, political opponents. And, you know, Trump has money, lawyers, attention, and so on. It's the little guys who are in the most danger because they have absolutely no support. And the same thing is happening to them as is happening to the big name guys. Uh, it's happening at all levels, wherever the left is in power. Wake up, folks. Like, <laughs> I don't know. If, if you needed an alarm clock, here it is. Here's today's episode because this is the stuff that you think like, oh, it won't hurt me. It won't impact me until it does. And when it does, all of a sudden, much like Kevin, your entire world is turned upside down. So I want you folks to please take this episode, really, like, really internalize this episode. Think about the, the consequences of, of what Kevin is facing just for standing up and speaking his mind, exercising his First Amendment rights. That, that is the, the part I think we all should take away from today and frankly, be a little, little apprehensive, be a little, I'm going to use the word, scared, because that is a, a, a tool that is being used, not could be used, is being used right now against average everyday people just like Kevin. So uh, with that being said, Kevin, where can folks go ahead, support you? If they want to obviously learn more about the case, uh, maybe be able to, to voice some support. Where's the best means for folks to go ahead and do that? Yeah. So um, I, I tell people there's three ways that they can help out. Uh, one is they can share this story with their friends, family, journalists in particular to get the awareness out. Uh, the second way is they can donate to Ilya's uh, fund. Uh, he's been working tirelessly. Um, so he, uh, he, he's been generously doing this pro bono and um, he's running out of money because it's been taking so long. Um, that link, the give, send, go link and the bottom here, give, send, go.com slash act and assault. All the donations go directly to him. Uh, I don't touch it at all. Um, and then the third way, what was the third way? I forgot. Um, oh, show up to the court uh, cases in person if you're local. Um, trial is currently scheduled for April 2nd at 8.30 a.m. at the Concord District Courthouse in Concord, Massachusetts, 305 Walden Street. Uh, we asked people to wear blue to support you know to show that we're together um but you can also go on to my uh facebook my odyssey channel i usually put out all the updates uh from court uh all the court audios Ilya does great recaps at the end we we capture that um i'm on odyssey as, as uh at kevin d mackey just like uh i'm spelled here um yeah that that's it Perfect. Gentlemen, um, again, I, I can't thank you enough for joining the show. Kevin, telling your story. Ilya, giving some context. And, and obviously, I want you, the audience, to, to, to do something from today's episode, right? We, we always say, go ahead and give the episode a share. And, and that's true. Yes, I want you to share today's episode. But this is an episode that we need you to, to support an action in this case. In this case, I'm asking you, audience, please go support Kevin. GiveSendGo.com forward slash 
Acton Assault, A-C-T-O-N, not action, Acton Assault. And uh, I'll make sure we include those links in the show notes. So please go give what you can. If you are local in Massachusetts, please attend the court case April 2nd, 8.30 a.m. We'll make sure, of course, all those links, as we talked about, are in the show notes. Um, And with that being said, yeah, obviously share today's episode. That's part of the battle here. We want to more or less help wage a war of PR here for Kevin and, and help raise awareness to what's happening, but not just for Kevin, but for the fact that this can happen quite literally to anybody. So that's our episode for today, folks. Again, if you enjoyed the episode, where can you go ahead and share it? You can share the audio version or the video version of the show. Audio, your favorite podcast, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Spotify, Wherever it is you get your podcast, I get mine from Podcast Addict. Just do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell. And of course, do me a favor. Go back. We have over 810 episodes here of The Brian Nichols Show. I guarantee of those, there's a few that are going to leave you educated and enlightened and informed. But please do me a favor. Specifically, check out that episode with Daniel Benier that I talked about earlier. I'm going to include that. If you're watching us on the video version of the show, stay tuned. But I'm going to include that right about here. It should be popping up. But again, I'll include the uh, the video there with Daniel Benier in the show notes. Kevin, do you have one more thing? Yeah, I just wanted to remind people that at that Give, Send, Go link is the video of the attack. Yep. So people can watch it. And yes, and, and we'll make sure to we include that as well in the uh, the show notes, so it's easy for folks to find. So we'll we'll include that first two minutes or so of the actual confrontation. The following six or so is the the aftermath. So definitely is great to give some context. Also, kind of horrifying that nobody in in the justice system has watched that video yet. Apparently, um, that's kind of scary, but. That is, I guess, the way our system works. Woohoo! Um, other than that, folks, for the video version of the show, yes, YouTube, Rumble, Sovereign, Facebook, Twitter, wherever it is that you like to consume your video content, we are uploading to The Brian Nichols Show. Um, again, do me a favor, hit that little like button, hit that notification bell, and of course, head down below into the comments. We want to hear your thoughts. Do you believe this? Can you believe that there is a case like this happening right now, despite Literally all the evidence we have, I can't. I would love to hear your thoughts, and I'm sure Kevin and Ilya would as well. Let us know down below in the show notes, or if you just want to keep those thoughts private, email me, brian at Show.com. One last plug. I know I, I'm a sales guy. I have to. Please support the folks who support us here at The Brian Nichols Show, and that is our sponsors. So whether it's Cardio Miracle, Ebels, CBD, Liquid Freedom Energy Tea, BNC Technology Advisors, or more, they're all found over at briannicholshow.com. You can find them on the homepage, or if you check out the episode page for today, you'll see all those sponsors lined up right there on the right-hand column. That's all I have for you, folks. Thank you for joining us, and please go share today's episode. we got to raise awareness for Kevin and this just insane case that he is currently facing. So with that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show. For Kevin and Ilya, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.